for Jay and Stacy. I'm curious kind of here. Give it up for Stacy Hala. <laughs> curtsying is a very bizarre a curtsy. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I was just kidding. <laughs> How do people not fall over? <laughs> uh, you guys having a good time? Happy New Year's Eve! Yeah! Uh -huh. Enjoying all your food and everything? Can we please give a big round of applause to our bar staff, our Nate, Kathy? <laughs> have been cooking their hearts out for you all day long. Uh, so excited to have you here. This is actually our 10th New Year's Eve extravaganza here. 10 years of Curious Comedy Theater. 10 years. 10 years. We just did a, a telethon this past weekend. We have a fundraiser going on. Uh, so if you'd like to make a donation, uh, if you're like, oh my goodness, I only have a few hours left for tax deductible donations, you're in the in right place because we'll help. We'll help you out. Every day we're nonprofit in. So. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so uh, the, the first show you saw was a little sneak peek into what we do here every seven, every Saturday, Friday and Saturday at 7.30. Uh, by round of applause, who has come to a Curious Comedy Showdown on a normal weekend? <laughs> wow, what the fuck is wrong with the rest of you people? <laughs> we're here all the time. <laughs> uh, so that was a peek of that, and uh, we're going to give you a sneak peek into some of the things that we have going on into 20. 19. Oh, it's so exciting, Stacey. What's coming up every Saturday here at Curious Comedy Theater at 9.30? It's a brand new show, A Jay. brand new show? Yeah, it's called Late Night Special, and it'll be like a late night talk show with a variety of acts, like stand-ups, musicians, burlesque. Kate Brown, just yeah. kidding, we're hoping. Uh. Yeah, Kate Brown, <laughs> Kate, <laughs> she hasn't agreed yet, but we're just going to keep talking about her until she shows up. So everybody, uh, Say, Kate Brown, come to Curious. Ready? One, two, three. Kate Brown, come to Curious. Great. And then you'll all have to come back and see that. Um, and so we're super excited. We'll be doing that every Saturday uh, at 9.30. And we'll have monologues and we'll have video roll-ins. Jay, do you want to mention uh, the first video piece we did? Where did we go? Oh, my gosh. Jay and Stacy, we went on a magical journey to a mausoleum in Selwood, Oregon. Yeah. Has anybody been to Wilhelm's Portland Memorial and Mausoleum in Selwood, Oregon? It, it, I didn't know it was there. I've lived here for 20 years. It's insane. Um, it was built in 1901. It's the largest mausoleum west of the Mississippi. It has 90,000 residents. Yeah. By residents, it means dead people yeah. that are in there. And it's really cool. It's a little Harry Potter-ish, a little Mad Men, because like each room has, you'll see, you'll see the yeah, video. Yeah, we made a video. We got a tour of it. Uh, it's not open to the public because people get lost. <laughs> and also do... Satanic Wait. rituals at night. Because yeah. <laughs> it's Portland, right? You're like, come in here with 90,000 people. They're yeah. going to do some satanic rituals. Yeah, we went down there, took a camera crew. It was very fun. And we're going to premiere that, hopefully, on our very first show of Late Night Special, January 5th. So Great. <laughs> and uh, we also have another show. It's called Portland's Funniest Videos. It's on the third Wednesday, and it's open to people to submit comedy videos, and then the audience votes on which one uh, they like best, or that there's always a top three. So we're gonna share for you now one of those videos. This was the first place winner that in uh, this past November. And so are we ready up there? Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, a little clip from Portland's Funniest Videos. <laughs>
I bet you're wondering, how did he just do that? The thing you need to know about scat is it's very similar to the Brazilian art of dance fighting, known as capoeira, but for your lips. Squeak, squeak, zibi, doot, and zap, cha, cha, fa, fa, hoot, see, soo, zibidi, boink, zoinks, zi, goink, goink. The power of scat truly lies in the throat chakra, but also the groin chakra. I'm here to teach you the methods and the techniques. Anybody can scat, okay? Let's hear it. Scat is a linguistic river. Um, I don't know if you've ever gotten really high on green tea, but it's the same feeling. What I really love to do is I like to go up to a random stranger and just let them have it, scat away. They love it. They get a kick out of it. Animals line up, you can move with your fingers, you can play with them how you feel. How do we do the da 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 Real music and real people, reaching out to the common man, spreading joy. Hey, bud. Hey, pal. You seem down on your luck. You look like you could use this quarter. Scat, 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 a root and dat, scrim it at da 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 scat, scat. I like you. Pup, pup, five, I do that, root and scrape, scree out. Yeah. Wanna get a beer? What is scat? How is scat? Why is scat? Intonation, cadence, refers to gibberish. Scat can be born out of any sound. A farm animal? Donkey, 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 do. Or a train? A jubi, 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 do, do. Or something as simple as just a couple words. A couple words. Absent father? Fuck you, Billy! Spoiled prick. I buy you a new Nintendo every goddamn six months, it feels like. I get you a PT Cruiser, near mint condition, with tinted windows, and I'm the absentee father. I don't even know why I asked you to do this. I'm just trying to make a video so I can make money for you and your mother with her severe peanut allergies. She keeps eating peanut butter. I tell her not to. She can't stay out of the goddamn hospital. It's bleeding me dry, Billy. God. Bib and bap, beef bulgogi, curry and barbecue. Did I reinvent scat? Maybe, probably yes. I've never slept with Tony Bennett. That lie got way out of hand. Helen Hunt, maybe. I'm Delfonso Crimson. Let's have a scat. Poop, 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 pow! Morning, Stu. ID. Your donor? Yes, I'm still a donor. All right, sign in. How long are you staying? An hour, maybe. Maybe? Maybe 45 minutes. All right, what's in the bag? Kale, a little bit of milk. I got those otter pops you like. Okay. 
Thank you. Jerry! Oh, hey, Tucker. How's it going? It's going good, man. I got your favorite. Little whole milk for you. Awesome. You get Stu's Otter Pops? Have I ever forgotten Stu's Otter Pops? You want to have some tea? Yeah. You want to stop doing tricks on your bike and sit down? Sure. This tea cost me $4,000 a gram. It's made out of Peruvian oyster spawn. That's really good. How have you been? I've been good. Uh, I've been working out, doing some Zumba, and... Oh, uh, Stu got me a gun from South America. Oh my god, man! You wanna try? Put it away. This is the kind of stuff I've been talking about lately, man. You're going stir-crazy up here. Now, I wasn't gonna say anything, but Tiff's best friend's husband just died. Since she's on the rebound, thought maybe the four of us could go get a couple glasses of sake, see a romantic comedy. No. If it works out, you know, all I'm saying is you wouldn't have to be alone up here all the time. I'm not alone up here, okay? I have everything I need right here. People treat me different ever since I got my money. I don't know why. How long have I been your friend? Since birth. I know, and how many times have I let you down? Twice. One time. Trust me, okay? I see this girl, and she's got this thousand-yard stare that reminds me of you. What I'm trying to tell you is, she's perfect. Fine. I'll go outside. Drink up. <laughs> Michelle. Oh, so he's a millionaire? Mm, he's loaded. <laughs> <laughs> he's not the only one. But is he attractive? Terribly. Hey, guys, sorry I'm late. You must be Michelle. Hi. Enchanté. Nice to meet you. Tucker. <laughs> Who the fuck are you, man? It's me, Jerry. Hey, so I see you guys already got started. What'd I miss? Not too much. I heard that you're a professor. That's correct, of behavioral economics. Ah, I know it very well. You want to know how I feel when I spend my money? Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he? Stu, huh? Jerry! ID. When are we going to get past this, huh? When are you and I going to cross this little bridge, Stu? You a donor? Yes, I'm a donor, God damn it, Jerry! Jerry! Hey, Tucker. How's it going, man? Man. Have you heard of jazzercise? Jazz-infused exercise. My favorite new hobby with the thing I love the most, jazz. <laughs> well, what the hell was that last night, man? <sighs> that was a good time. I had a blast. You had a blast? You weren't even there. Who the hell was that guy? <sighs> that was Jerry, my social proxy. That's me when I'm out there. <sighs> Pretty cool, huh? No, it's not cool. You're yelling at me, Tucker, in my own home. That's not what I'm trying to do, Jerry, but we gotta figure this out. What would Michelle say? I'm thinking Michelle is ready for round two. We already have a second date lined up. I know, man. Obviously, you guys had great chemistry. I'm not disputing that, Jerry. Seriously. No! No, Jerry! We're not having this conversation, okay? Jerry! Jerry! We need to talk. What do you want, Tucker? Stu, can we get a moment, please? Sorry I yelled at you, I just care so much. You're treating me like I'm a baby. I'm sorry. I don't know what you want, I'm doing the best I can. I want you to lose the proxy. That date the other night was for you and instead you sat on the sidelines with Quiet. I need to think. Please do. Must be Tiffany. I am. Yeah, I heard a lot about you. Oh, awesome. Hey, come on in. Thank come you. on in. Hey, whoa. ID. Man, this is fucked up, Stu. How you doing, man? Sounds like things with Michelle are going great. Yeah, I'm sorry I haven't called. We've just been spending all our time together. How'd that other Jerry take it? Well, I'm not gonna lie to you. It wasn't easy. I'm proud of you. It's great to finally see you living your own life for the first time. Oh, yeah. She's actually coming over pretty soon, so I better get ready. <laughs> I can take a hint.
Did you just lie to our best friend? I'm a millionaire, Jerry. We're lone wolves. You know, I'm starting to think that Tucker's right. About what? Don't think that I don't see it. You are all alone up here. But it doesn't have to be that way. Michelle's an amazing girl. Remember that time we went ice skating? That was our first kiss. That time up on Capitol Hill during the picnic? She told me about her love of horses. That's true love. She just wants me for my money. No, she doesn't. She loves you for you. You really think so? Yeah! Well, I don't even know what to do. You gotta start being Jerry all the time. I am Jerry. You're Jerry. I'm Jerry! You're Jerry! You're Jerry! No, no, yeah, I'm You're Jerry! Jerry! I'm Jerry! Nice to meet you, Jerry. I'm Carson. Now let's fix this tonight. Yes! After we cut those fucking nails. To us. To us. Now how about we move us somewhere a little more comfortable? Oh yeah. Jerry will be right in. You look like an angel. Who the fuck are you? Um, uh, I am um, Jerry. Up comic uh, can be seen on the Epix TV show called Unprotected Sets. Epix is like a channel that you can go and get for free for a couple weeks, and it's worth it because Unprotected Sets is an incredible show. They did interviews uh, with the comics and then uh, mixed it with their performances. It's awesome. They shot three episodes here at Curious, uh, and he was one of the talents featured on that. He's one of Portland's funniest people. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Mohanad El Shiki. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, Happy New Year or whatever. Uh, yeah. I mean, who are we kidding? It's just going to be 2018 again. But hey, good to be drunk tonight. Uh, uh, my name is Mahane, that's my name. I, uh, I, uh, I've, lived, uh, I've lived here in the U.S. for four and a half years now, and I think I need to speak to a manager. <laughs> yeah. Because the product looks nothing like the image. Uh, I even read the reviews before coming here. Yeah, and I was like, wow, 50 stars sounds amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. No, recently I, uh, I moved to uh, I moved to a new place and and uh, both of my roommates are great. I love them both. Both of my roommates are Jewish. When I tell people that, uh, they get to they tend to get uh, too excited. <laughs> yeah, and they would do the thing where they look at me and be like, "Well, won't you look at that? <laughs> Arabs and Jews can live together in peace. <laughs> Amazing." <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. But also, I feel like you're trying to make this into an Israel-Palestine thing. <laughs> and let me tell you, in our household, the stakes are way lower. <laughs> <laughs> like, none of us wakes up in the morning just to look around and be like, well, this land has been given to me by the Lord, yeah? Uh-huh. I'm like, well, that's a whimsical way to say landlord, but sure, yeah. <laughs> also, landlord Greg. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely not God. Like, <laughs> like, the only thing he turns into wine is our rent money, and that's it. <laughs> he's a piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> 
No, one of my roommates, uh, his name is Gion. I don't know if you guys heard the name Gion before. I have it myself. So I asked him, like, oh, Gion, that's a nice name. What does Gion mean? And he said, oh, Gion, Gion is an Italian name that translates to God is great. Yeah, and he said it that way, too. Uh, I was like, incredible. Okay, I mean, God is okay at best, but sure. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but also, I felt kind of jealous uh, because I know for a fact that I cannot name my kid God is great in Arabic. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> that won't fly. Like, like, that literally won't fly anywhere. Uh, yeah. No, we, we do we do live in a weird time right now because a lot of people have opinions about like things like guns and stuff, and mostly everyone is wrong. And uh, <laughs> I, as a comedian, like every time like bad, something bad happens, I have to go on social media and I'm like, okay, I have to write something clever. That's what I do. And uh, last time a shooting happened, I just went and I wrote and I tweeted that we shouldn't be sending thoughts and prayers, and we should be praying for more gun control which to me sounded like a very logical statement to post on the internet <laughs> with the name Mohanet. Uh, <laughs> have you guys seen the internet? Yeah. <laughs> and I believed in what I said until that guy Kevin replied to me. <laughs> you guys know Kevin? <laughs> From social media, yeah. You can look him up, he's an egg. And, uh, and Kevin replied to me, and this is what Kevin said, and I quote, uh, you fucking Muslim, I eat bacon 24 seven. Uh, which is pretty impressive. Uh, I was like, man, I don't eat bacon, but I think that's super unhealthy. Uh, <laughs> Also, probably the worst argument against gun control. <laughs> Just shouting your favorite food at me. No, Kevin, no. <laughs> no, recently uh, I quit my job to do comedy full time uh, and I used to work in retail. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you were all my parents. Uh, <laughs> I, I used to work in retail, and anyone here worked in retail or done it before? So, yeah, I can tell you, like, I'm so tired. Uh, the rest of you look like you can afford to be here. You probably never did that. Uh, no, I, I worked in retail and I hated it so much. And I used to work at that place that I'm not even allowed to talk about on stage because once they learned that I was a comedian, they made me sign a contract to never mention their name. Uh, but they do sell iPhones. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, from a glass box in downtown Portland. Uh, so it can be anything. <laughs> and I remember working there when uh, that saying or whatever, like, uh, all lives matter was trending for a while. And I remember looking at that and being like, oh, those people have never worked retail before. Because <laughs> once you do retail, it changes your perspective. Yeah, from all lives matter to something more like, Oh, some people deserve to die. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and when I used to work there, uh, people would do the thing where they would hear my accent and they would try to guess where I'm from, because that's a fun game for both of us. <laughs> uh, so I had a, this lady one day who asked me where I was from, and I answered, like, oh, I'm, I'm originally from Libya, that's where I'm from, to which she responded, oh, do you mean Lebanon? <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I meant. Yeah, absolutely, Lebanon. For 27 years, I called it Libya. And, <laughs> And then here you come, it's Lebanon, absolutely, yeah. The customer is always right. Yeah. 
No, I also had this one dude uh, who came in with a broken phone and was like, uh, hey man, I know this is gonna be like a, a white dude question to ask, uh, but are you Persian? And I was like, no, I'm not. And he was like, are you sure? And I was like, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure, yeah. And he was like, oh, I'm just asking because my dad is Persian. And I was like, oh, okay, uh, plot twist, my dude, you're Persian. Uh, yeah, you're not white. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Should've gotten an Apple Care. Uh, no, I, I, I did grow up Muslim, though. I grew up in a Muslim country, in a, in a Muslim family, but growing up, I used to read the Bible a lot. Yeah, because uh, you gotta know where your enemies are up to. And, uh, <laughs> and surprisingly, they were up to the same thing. It's like, you guys do that too? I don't know. And one of my favorite stories uh, is the story of Noah. And uh, I know some of you are like, mm, that story doesn't check out. Uh, and it's not the fact that he lived to be 950 years old. Uh, it is that his wife stayed with him that whole time. <laughs> no way, especially with that arc thing. Mm -mm. Yeah. Also, I saw the thing on the news lately that the uh, school district in Pennsylvania, uh, they want to arm students and protect them by giving them rocks. <laughs> yeah. I know some of you don't believe me, and you're like, Pennsylvania doesn't have schools. They do. Uh, <laughs> they do. <laughs> Yeah, but seriously though, they want to arm students and protect them by giving them rocks. <laughs> and that will work only in one case. Like if the attacker weapon of choice was like scissors. <laughs> yeah, if he comes with paper. <laughs> Those kids are fucked. <laughs> I'm gonna finish with this, but uh, uh, my, my second roommate, uh, Annie, uh, recently uh, she got a rescue dog. And the uh, reason we know it's a rescue dog is because uh, she told us that every day since the day she's got it. <laughs> Super amazing, yeah. And uh, she got it for emotional support, yeah, so technically she's the rescue. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, some of you laughed, some of you are definitely rescues. Uh, and that's fine. But her dog keeps barking at me all the time, and I'm like, and I'm like, hey Annie, what's up with your dog? And she's like, oh my dog, my dog doesn't like people like you. And I replied with jokingly saying, oh shit, a racist dog? And she's like, no, 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 it's not that, it's just this dog has been abused in the past exclusively by Mexican men. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, I'm so glad you explained it. Because <laughs> at the beginning I thought it had to do with Dre's, but <laughs> just Mexican men. <laughs> I'm gonna end this it uh, like this uh, year is ending with zero laughter. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, everyone. You've been great. Thank you. That was such a great set. Let's give him another round of applause. Thank you. Uh, so you're doing pretty well here, Mohanad. I am, yeah, just killing it. You're killing it. Yeah. Killing it here in Portland. What made you 
did you come immediately to Portland when you came to the U.S.? Uh, yes, I did. Why I, Portland, of all I places? I did. Uh, well, I wish I had a, a better story, but because I came uh, through an exchange program when I came here, because I studied at PSU. Uh, and uh, they picked Portland for me. Okay. Yeah. Can you make up a better story? For Absolutely. Us? So I watched Portlandia. Okay, great. And yeah. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so whimsical. That's a much better story. Yeah. 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 Um, so had you been, it was funny because when I first moved to Oregon, actually, there was um, uh, a lot of Japanese tourists because I saw this show called Sweet Home Oregon. And oh. so there was this awareness, like Little House of the Prairie, for, for a lot of us. Were you even aware before you came here of, like, Portland or Oregon culture? I had no idea that Oregon existed, to be honest. No. So um, was, uh, yeah. was your perception, like, it was going to be more like New York or L.A.? Exactly, or? yeah. Because, like, all, the, like the, uh, all I, I saw on TV was, like, basically like, just, like, big cities like New York or just, like, L.A. or San Francisco. And then I came here, I was like, oh, it's green and there are dogs, okay. Uh, there are no people, oh, I, I can fuck with that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome, did you come from a bigger city or a smaller Yeah, town? well my city was big and uh, I, I come originally from the city of Benghazi. Uh, you don't have to give me a standing ovation for that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it is big, it is big. It's a population of like uh, one million people. Uh, yeah, it's a huge city, yeah. So uh, so your name is Mohaned. Yeah, with an N. And yeah. people always wanna call you Mohammed. Yeah, cause uh, I mean, they look the same, also people are idiots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just saying, we don't know, we know Mohammed uh, yeah. as a public figure, probably vaguely. Is yeah. Mohammed like Mohammed's younger brother, or is there? It was actually the name of his sword. Are you serious? Yeah, it is 100% true, <laughs> not making that up. Yeah. Which is kind of like, ooh, I'm like, who names their sword? I'm like, I'm gonna change one letter. Yeah. <laughs> But that was smart, though. I mean, say what you will about the Prophet Muhammad, and you shouldn't. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> that was clever. <laughs> that was clever. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's, it's an interesting thing to name your child after. It would be like if I had a child named them Excalibur. Exactly, yeah, or like, um, I don't know, Machine Gun Kelly or yeah. whatever. <laughs> yeah. Water gun Sally. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Or, or Rock. The Rock. Yeah. I guess The Rock is also named true. after a weapon in Pennsylvania. That's very true. So. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> you know, there are racist dogs, by the way. There are many racist dogs. I know, I know. It's funny because people are like, uh, dogs can only see black and white. I'm like, that's what racist people do. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. So it sounded like from the beginning of your set that maybe you're not too optimistic about 2019 being much different than 2018. I mean, it's just uh, the time passes. <laughs> like seriously, it's just a passage of time. It's just the Earth like made a circle around the sun. And if people don't change stuff, it's not gonna change. It's just gonna be the same. It's not just gonna change all by itself, Mohammed? It's not, I'm sorry. <laughs> To break it to you, it's not gonna change. It's gonna be the same unless people do something about it. Yeah. 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 What are you gonna do about it in 2019? Oh my God. Uh, so I have this big. It's mostly like so it had to do with health and stuff, fitness. But one of my main resolutions is uh, to continue to never run a marathon. That's great. I think that's an excellent yeah. resolution. Yeah. Yeah. You can give that a round of applause. Yeah. I think that's noble and important. Yeah. Is there any other New Year's resolution? Uh, I don't know. Honestly, it's mostly work things. I just like want to write more and mm -hmm. like uh, perform, especially like I'm doing this uh, thing now full time, and it's gonna be the first time not having a day job yeah. where I crush my soul. So now right. I get to uh, <laughs> crush my soul on stages, which yeah. is amazing. That sounds good. Uh, you, I mean, you've been doing stand up for like two years. Uh, exactly three years. Three years yeah. now. Mm -hmm. I mean, your level of success in three years yeah. is something that most comics would literally kill for because they're not healthy yeah. people, oh, stand up wow. comedians. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's true. Uh, in a three year span of time. And, and what do you think, you know, obviously you work hard and you're a great yeah. writer. What else do you think is contributing to your success that you've been having? 
I mean, I don't know. I try to, uh, I mean, obviously, like, I come from, like, a different place and I have, like, a different perspective and stuff like that. Uh, but a lot of people do. But I try to be smart about it. Like, I've done so much, like, research and, like, studied. I, I study comedy more than anything else. Like, I, I just don't come without, like, because uh, at the time I was in college, so I treated comedy as if it was, like, some, like, uh, yeah, a academic, like a pro like, exactly something yeah. like a project that I had. I'm like I'm getting an A on this, so that's just what I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like I was my master or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've done. Yeah. So I and think is there a lot of stand up in Libya? There's comedy, but like in mostly it's like plays, or like theater, or like like uh, sitcoms or so, uh, stuff like that. And they're like similar to sitcoms here in the U.S. as in they are not funny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, I, it has been super fun to have you. Thank and, you and so you'll much. You'll be on Late Night Special coming up. Yeah, in January. In yeah, January, yeah. we'll Hi. have on it back. We'll talk to you some more. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. to not running a marathon is super smart. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, from, I'm from Massachusetts originally, and I worked right near the, uh, I heard one cheer. Yeah, woo, Appropriate. Boston. Appropriate. It's a long way away from here. Uh, I lived right near the, the uh, finish line for the Boston Marathon, and so one year I, I went and watched people fall, finish the marathon, and I was like, that looks like a stupid thing to do. <laughs> like, they were half dead. Uh, it's a horrible, horrible thing. Uh, so before we take another break, uh, we're going to invite back out uh, Eva and Vanity so we can chat with them a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the stage uh, Eva and Vanity Thorne. Welcome back. Oh, yeah. I'm hungry, too. There you go, my dear. Hello, my lovelies. Hi. Let's give them another round of applause. It was so much fun. Like a theme of this hour is nerds, uh, because Mahana had approached comedy like an assignment <laughs> at school, like he was doing homework, and you guys mentioned being nerds. I'm really excited about this idea that your burlesque is inspired by actual history here. So are, are you studying? I think there was mention that you're working with a historian. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Um, yeah, we've been, uh, hi, I don't speak on the microphone as often as Eva does. <laughs> uh, You're a mover. I, it's a fact. <laughs> um, we've been doing a lot of research for a long time on vaudeville in Portland and actually um, kind of just like everything post-Civil War in like Portland and like that era going all the way up to the 1920s. And then we got in touch with Melissa Lang, who's a historian here in Portland. Ooh. Oh. Wow. <laughs> and she's been helping us uh, really hone in what was going on in like 1913 Portland. And it seems like there was a big, I mean, there's so many, is it because of like the port city or the loggers? Like there's so many ballrooms in Portland, and dan it yeah. seemed like there were a lot of dance halls and a lot of there, vaudeville well, theaters. Well, what I've learned is that initially there were a lot of men. Yes. <laughs> Because you know, we have like yeah. per single, capita, yeah. I don't there's know. There's still a lot of men here. Per capita, we yeah. have more churches and more strip clubs in Portland than than yeah, anywhere else, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I is know. That, you you got to go somewhere to drink it off, and then you know, right? Somewhere and to then they feel bad and they go to church on <laughs> Portland. Sunday. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Portland has a long history of vice because of all the men. Sorry, guys. Mm, True specifically, story. Portland was a stop um, on the Orpheum circuit between Seattle and LA. Um, and San Francisco. So there were like four hubs on the West Coast that had an Orpheum Theater, and Portland was one of them, up until 1927. Where, do you know where that was? <laughs> it was on Southwest Broadway, actually. Okay. We had our own Broadway. Well, that makes sense. Uh, the Hollywood Theater, which is a wonderful nonprofit in town, shows movies, that was also a, a vaudeville theater for a time. There it was, and most of the theaters that were vaudeville theaters were converted to talkies in the uh, late 20s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how much of the history is involved in the routines and the burlesque? 
I think it varies by performer. The, the history comes in more of the backstory of the whole experience. So, you know, as people come in, our Moreland um, is in the back over there. He's our snake oil salesman. He'll be over here in the corner with a photo booth and, you know, something to sell you. Um, <laughs> we have a strong arm um, who's uh, my husband, uh, you know. Stop bragging. I know, <laughs> I know. Mm -hmm. uh, he's dreamy. Um, and, and kind of a little story that's going on. So um, one of the things that would often happen in theaters back in that day were um, the morality police, the church ladies, um, would got a little uptight uh, now and again about all of the, <laughs> the vice that was going on and feel like they had to take care of it and do something. And there was a lot of drinking and swindling going on in, in all these vaudeville houses. And so they um, would... Uh, you know, encourage the police from time to time to make raids on them. So like you might have seen the night at Minsky's, um, that's an actual true story of something that happened at Minis Minsky's Theater in New York City. And um, so, you know, um, that would happen occasionally when they got loud enough to annoy the police because really the police in Portland were incredibly on the take for a very long time. And it was, you know, it was the theaters and the body houses and the crimps and all those people called paid what was called a sweet tax. And they just basically paid them off to be able to keep doing their business. And as long as they made the payments and the church ladies were quiet and most of the, the you know, scoundrels stayed in the north end of Portland, what we know as Old Town, they wouldn't make much of a stink about it. But occasionally they would, you know, get fired up and they would have to come in and do something. And so the theaters developed this system where they would uh, flash a red light as a warning to the performers that, oh, you better clean up your act. You got you to work clean now. You can't work Stop what was called blue. Stop taking your clothing off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or even using curse words or, you know, doing certain movements or anything like that. So we're going to take people back into an experience with that where they have to help us find the, the you know who the detective who's trying to bust us okay so yeah. we can pay him off mm -hmm. great and you guys have been doing it's a steampunk s style show and you guys have been doing it as part of a steampunk festival yes um i've been doing it for um uh, specifically eva's been part of the show but this is the first time that we're co-producing the show together i've been doing it as part of GearCon pdx portland steampunk convention for about six years now and that's where it originated and you guys really feel like burlesque is something that empowers women. Can you tell me a little bit about that? You should definitely talk about that. That's okay. your jam. <laughs> that is my jam. That is my jam. I really feel like women should rule the world. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, yeah, you can totally applaud for that. <laughs> You, you can see, um, like, the women are applauding. The women yeah. are applauding. The men are like, I probably should if I want to have sex tonight. <laughs> True story, men. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I do. I think it's um, the more power uh, that women are able to share and express, and not in a, like, a, you know, a crack down kind of a way, but like to feel powerful in themselves and, you know, take on the things that are need fixing in our world, really, um, I think the better off we all are. Yep. <laughs> and Dude, I, one yeah. lone guy. I know. There. I love you. Um, call me. Uh, and I think sexuality is the greatest power that you have for feeling yourself. It is the creative spark in the world, literally. Um, I know you guys are like, what? We just thought people were taking their clothes off. It's Portland. I'm a hippie. <laughs> um, so I teach women uh, burlesque in my showgirl temple. And um, our chorus girls, who are students of mine, will be performing in the show. Great. And yeah, absolutely. I just like getting on stage and taking off my clothes was definitely one of the most freeing things that I've done. And I can't say that I've never been an outspoken person, but I feel a lot more comfortable in myself after having to do that. And you told me about that. I mean, burlesque has absolutely changed my life. Uh, believe it or not, uh, 200 people that I just took my clothing off in front of. <laughs> I, I used to not get like in a bathing suit. Like I was one of those girls at the pool with a t-shirt on, you know, the lifeguard yelling at them that you couldn't wear a t-shirt in the pool, in my childhood. Um, and, and it's been a revolution, and not only in my body image and how I feel about myself, but in how I interact with the world because I have that like confidence that I know that after you take your clothing off in front of 500 people all cheering, you can kind of do anything. <laughs> 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 
Awesome. Well, we're going to wrap it up, but if somebody in here is now moved to take a class from you, where should they go? Showgirltemple.com. Great. <laughs> or I'll be scooting out the back door in a minute. Okay. Yeah. You're, and we'll be back. Yeah, you'd be hard to miss. I know. So she'll be out there <laughs> if you want to chat with her. Uh, we're going to take another uh, quick intermission, go get some more food and drinks, and I'll uh, have a round of applause for Vanity and Eva and Mahani. Yeah. And we'll be back shortly. Thank you, guys.